we are one. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> brilliant, brilliant. Absolute delight again to see so many people here in our wonderful church. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember what I always say today you have not come to watch our wonderful guests for the weekend work. They are watching how you are bringing in your energies, your loved ones, your connection to the spirit world, and working with that. For without you, there would be no service. So remember, you are an integral part of each and every service here at Paul. <coughs> Absolute great delight to welcome to us here in Paul, lovely Jeanette and Tim Abbott. Great friends of ours of the church during the lockdowns, did several services and our Saturday night talks and including last Saturday night. Absolute joy to, they're real, real people. So it's, <laughs> she's been hitting me all weekend. I, I, seriously, I'm, I'm gonna be bruised. Um, absolute delight to meet you both in person and share those energies. It's a pleasure we'll, to be here. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Brilliant. We're looking forward to your service today heartily. I would now like to invite Tim for the opening. No, I would now like to invite Jeanette. 50-50. <laughs> you know, if, if, if I bet on a horse in the National, bet on anything else. <laughs> Jeanette for the opening prayer. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. And it is a great pleasure to be here, it really is. And it's not that bad, is it, really? <laughs> but when he thumps, he gets it back, trust me. <laughs> but let's remember, we've joined together this morning for this divine service. So let us all together join in that wonderful power that we know as our Father God. Could you join with me in prayer, please? Divine Spirit, Father God, May we offer up our thanks. Our thanks for bringing each person here safely within this sanctuary of light this morning. And to join together within that brotherhood, to join together within love and love and light. We offer up our thanks for the many things in our world that at times we walk past and we take for granted. That beauty of mother nature the sunshine which today shines, the rain which is there if you need it. We offer up our thanks. Our thanks for life itself. For each one of us are on this planet have a life. And within that life, many, many experiences unfold. Some good, some bad. But we know that you will be there, Father, with us every step of the way. We now ask you, Father, that within our healing book, there are many names. We ask that, that beautiful energy that you give is given to each of those people. May I ask a special thought 
to those in our forces who are working tirelessly for peace within other countries to help them with bring about that peace and that unity between every man. We offer up our thoughts to them also and our protection so that they may once again join back with their family here within this country or many other countries so that peace can be found. We also ask you, Father, that we invite those from the spirit world, those that we know that have gone before us, those who we love dearly, whether they be close to us or not, we ask that their energy be drawn even closer, so not only Tim and myself can feel the presence of their loved one, but the person here can feel the presence of their loved one once again to be together, to be unified within that beautiful energy. We ask you, Father, to open this service, to open this service with love, light and harmony, and let us all unite within that brotherhood. We ask you these things in your name, which is truth, love and light. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeanette. <laughs> And I'd now like to invite you, please, if you care to, to join in with saying the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us, us not when in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you. And we now move our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our intents into the part of the service dedicated to healing. At this time, so many of us, our thoughts are with the Queen and the Royal Family. So today we would offer that special invitation, should you so wish, to send out your love. Because healing is love, and love is healing. Whatever your views, whatever your understandings, entirely up to you. But at the end of the day, there's a mother, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother who has now departed this physical world. So send out that love not only to her, but also to those left behind to walk the long path. We'd also invite you to, please, if you know anybody who at this time is in particular need of that healing balm to surround and uplift them, please just raise your hand, and when I point to you, simply call out their name. And that is all that is needed. The intelligence of spirit know and understand. So we invite you now, just for this short time, guided by gentle music, to open up that heart and let that love and that healing flow. Thank you.
Divine and infinite spirit, that whom we know as God, we thank you for this time of communication and healing. And this reminder too that we are all healers, by word, by thought, by deed. The opportunities surround us each day to pick up that mantle, to be of service to our fellow man and fellow woman. Amen. 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 Now I'd like to invite Tim for the <coughs> reading and address, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, may I say it's a pleasure on behalf of Jeanette and myself, it's a pleasure to be here in your church and share your, Monday di uh, your, your morning divine service with you. Uh, the morning's reading is from a gentleman called Gerard Macy. Uh, and Gerard was born in 18... 28 and died in 1907. Uh, and Gerard Macy was a gentleman who wrote for the major newspapers of the time, was a very outspoken gentleman and could be very damning of religion. And he uh, looked and studied different religions, became very disillusioned until he found spiritualism. And this is what he wrote of spiritualism. And it's entitled, Spiritualism to Me. Spiritualism to me, common with many others. Such a lifting of the mental horizons and a letting in of the heavens. Such a transformation from faith into fact that I can only compare life without it as being kept a prisoner on board a ship with its hatches battened down and living solely by the light of a candle. And then suddenly, on some starry night, allowed to go on board deck for the very first time to see the stupendous mechanism of the heavens all aglow with the glory of God. And I hope, like me, <coughs> certainly for me and I hope for you that is spiritualism so let me uh, uh, share my philosophy uh, with you for the morning let me uh, start by asking you a question who do you think you are who do you think you are and for some of you you may find that quite uh, attacking but if you've come here in worship this morning, as we should have all, I hope you find it as a very spiritual, challenging question. I'm sure, like me, uh, most of us, when we arise from our beds in the morning, one of the first things we do is we stand in front of a mirror. That's fine. Not all of us, I'm sure. Some of us don't do a good job of it. <laughs> but what is it you're seeing looking back at you? And we will live, and we get caught up sometimes in such a materialistic world that sometimes what we see looking back at us is maybe just the gray hairs that used to be darker and stronger Maybe the wrinkles under the eyes are a bit bigger this morning. And hey, I can see in the, tummy, uh, in the mirror my tummy is poking out a bit more than what it used to. And the suit, I have to breathe in a little bit <laughs> to get the buttons done. But do we allow ourselves time? Do we allow ourselves space? to see what we truly are. You see, ladies and gentlemen, each and every one of us 
are spirit incarnate. And I'm sure as spiritualists, that is something we can agree on. Spirit incarnate here and now. And what is that spirit that we are? I hope you agree with me when I say, for me, the spirit that we are is in essence a spark of that divine source that some of us will know as God. We are a facet, an expression of God. And what that suggests is the potential that lies within each and every one of us to achieve in our lives, immaterial to the grey hair and the big belly and the sagging <coughs> eyes, is great, is mighty. Because if God, in his wisdom, has the ability to ch change a mighty mountain to a grain of sand, a droplet of water into a mighty ocean, an infant child over time into an adult, <coughs> to change the seasons as we move through the year. If God has the power to do that, and we have a facet of God as part of our very being, then what are we capable of? What are we capable of as a collective, let alone as an individual? Sadly, we see out in the world today so many wars. And in our own country, we see many, many changes, don't we? Uh, sadly, I am not a royalist. I'm open to admit that. But I most certainly respect the work that our Queen has done in her life, representing us, our country. We have a new Prime Minister. There are lots of changes in our country, let alone in the world. And we fear, every time we turn the TV on today, we hear about the fear of as we move in this country into winter, of people starving, or people lacking in heat. And I know now, they're introducing around different towns centers of warmth or something like that. What are we coming to when we have to close our house up and go to the local library just to become warm, to the local food bank just to be able to eat? And we really need new people who are going to lead us. And hopefully our new king will do that. And hopefully our new Prime Minister will do that for us. But if the power lies within you, how can you be of service? You know, it is not politicians that change this world. It is not wars that change this world. It is not royal families that change this world. It is individuals. Jesus of Nazareth, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, and our Queen, if you are that way inclined. And you know, every one of them had something in common. Every one of them had a faith. Every one of them that I've mentioned had a relationship with their chosen God through their chosen religion that empowered them and gave them the understanding that if they stand up and are of service, they will make a change for the better. They will illuminate the light of this world. And each and every one of us, through the philosophy of this religion, accept that. really we have a responsibility to the spirit world 
we have a responsibility to God because of our understanding through this religion that we know as spiritualism. And it only takes a smile. Have you noticed how a smile is infectious? You smile at somebody, they'll smile back at you. <laughs> Come on, give me a smile. Well done. You can do it. And it's a gorgeous smile. <coughs> a helping hand costs nothing. But it may touch somebody's soul. That illuminates their spirit that illuminates their family spirit, that illuminates their village, their town, their city, their country, the world. We have that potential within us to achieve that as individuals. We only recognize Jesus of Nazareth, that, that name. We only recognize Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, uh, the Queen, we only recognize those names and titles because of the deeds that they've done. Remember, our queen was not even supposed to be queen. It was our uncle who was king, if you even remember, who gave up that position that allowed her, our queen's father, to become king. She wasn't supposed to be queen. And the media overlooked her when she was very young until her father became king. She was nobody. Gandhi was just a solicitor. He was nobody. Jesus of Nazareth was just a carpenter. He was nobody. But he stood up. They all stood up and took a step forward on behalf of other people. brotherhood of man is part of our philosophy it's in ground in the philosophy of this religion and at this time in our world in our country it is needed probably more than ever so let us not just come into our church and say god bless you love and light and then go out and forget who and what we are Yes, we are spiritualists, but above that, we are spiritual, and we are spirit incarnate. We are children of God, and we are afforded the same power. And I don't say this lightly. We are afforded the same power that God is. I'm not saying we're God. I'm saying we are spirit, and that spirit that we are is all potential. And that can be shown in service. Thank you very much. Wonderful. We don't need any more. <laughs> no, absolutely beautiful. Thank I'm you. Good <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank so you. much in there. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. We now move on to our piece of music for today. Uh, all creatures of our God and King. <laughs> During this, Paul will be taking the collection for the further work of this, your church.
Before I hand the platform over once more to Jeanette and Tim for their demonstration of evidential mediumship, you know what's going to happen now, don't you? Yes. 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 Sir, thank we you. Don't. <laughs> Surprise. This is where they all run out of the room. No. <laughs> Always remind people, and it's so nice to see so many new people in our church again today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a three-way communication. We have from spirit, through spirit, <coughs> to spirit. And each stage of that conversation needs to be supported by our input and our engagement with that conversation. So should Jeanette or Tim come to you, a nice clear response with a yes, no, or maybe. All right, so we do a practice run. It's a yes, no, maybe. <coughs> First one will not do that, I guarantee you. <laughs> I am going to hand over. Oh, yeah. Should we. Uh, you know, do you need a hand? Sorry? Do you need a hand? No, 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 I'm begging for. <laughs> Hang on, the bailiffs are coming. I'm buying the bailiffs. <laughs> Jeanette will be first up to work. So, the lovely Jeanette. You get all right? Yeah, well, it's, it's polite to wait for you to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> you started being polite when? Isn't it nice to see somebody else boss him around? Yes. yes. He's, done nothing but, <laughs> he's done nothing but boss me around for the last two days, so I'm getting my own back in front of all you people. <laughs> Do you know, communication is exactly what um, you've just done. You, you talk back. If your loved one sat here now and you could physically see them from the spirit world, would you ignore them? No. no. So you're not going to ignore them for me, are you? No. Because if you do, I shall find you, honestly. I shall <laughs> find who the message belongs to one way or the other. The main thing is, is that this service is your service. It's not ours. We're, we're just a voice of spirit. That's all we are just a voice, a channel that the spirit world have chosen to give you and relay you your messages from your loved one once again, to prove that they are still alive. They're not dead. No way are they dead. The only people that are dead are some of the people that may not answer me today. <laughs> <laughs> no, truly, honestly, I love working with the spirit world for the love they give me as well. And it's your loved ones that do that for me. So, on your permission, can I work with your loved ones, please? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Now, I, did, I have got two communicators, but I've asked the gentleman to wait and be patient. He wasn't very patient, but I've still told him he's got no choice. I have a lady working with me at the moment. Now, I normally know a rough idea where I'm going. This lady is a little bit playing me up. She's very lively, very, very um, out there, <coughs> modern in the, you know, in the way she is. She's very, very modern in her appearance. The way she lives her life is very modern. She's a lively character. She's um, not scared of saying her piece to anybody. Um, and she makes me smile, most important. And I do believe I'm talking about someone's mother. Now, I know this lady went to the spirit world with a cancerous condition, because I'm feeling that sickness. And I know that the person that was here sat next to her. The lady right at the bottom with the glasses on. Yeah. Would your mother be in the world of spirit, please, Rachel? Yeah. Yes? Would you understand being there when she passed? Not on the actual day, but very close. Very close. Would you understand this cancerous condition with this lady, please? Yes, you do. And this liveliness. She's a lively character. In fact, I can't stop laughing and I've got to stop. And it's her personality. I need to work with you if that's all right, please, sweetheart. Now, would you understand, please, four o'clock of her passing in the daytime? It probably was about then, but as I wasn't there, I'm not 100% sure. Because I can see the light from the room. As I look out the room, I can see the light from the room. But I know that somebody else was supposed to have been there and they didn't arrive. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. Now, I believe that would have been a family member. Yeah. 
because, well, but she said that didn't matter. She saw you all together way before she even became too sick. You understand? It's not about a big family get together. Don't talk about me dying because it's nothing to do with me dying. But I'm telling you all what you can have off me. I'm giving away my goods, my property, now. So there's no arguments, no disagreements about who's having what. It's going exactly where I want it to go. Do you understand that with her? Now there must be some silver. She's showing me some silver cutlery. And it's very, like teaspoons, it's a little set of teaspoons, which are very important that she treasured. And I know that they're antique, because she's telling me they're antique. Um, I've got to come back to her personality. I've got to keep coming back to her personality. If she went out and met someone that she never knew, you think that she'd known them for years. She talked to Joe Bloggs at the bus stop, won't she? She talked to absolutely anybody. And she hated to see anybody with very little. She'd give her last penny to help anybody, this lady. I know also um, there's a gentleman stands with her, um, but he's not as lively as her. He's not as lively as her, he's more placid. He's more of a gentleman, may I say. You won't believe, this must be a couple. Yeah. This must be a mom and dad. It's a couple? Well, they're mom and dad, aren't they? It's obvious. Mom and dad. Um, but you wouldn't believe they were together no. because they're so different. So different. But he loved her with all his heart. <coughs> he loved her with all his heart. But there wasn't enough showing of it. You understand that? Um, whether it was because she liked her life, she liked her life and there wasn't enough of our time, that's what I'm feeling yeah. with them. You understand them? Yeah. Then you must also be in a situation where you're not having enough of your time. Or oh, our time. You must have a partner, sweetheart. There must be someone. Right. Would you understand, please? The name of Keith. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Would he be quite close to you? At one time. Oh, at one time. Yeah. I'm pairing you off with somebody, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I like doing that. So if there's any single women, I'm happy to give you a message because I'll find you a man. <laughs> Might be a dead one, but I'll find you a man. <laughs> no, this is a live one, Keith. Yeah. Keith is a live one. Yeah. Because I feel that she's making me aware you're not like her. In that appear in the way she is in her life you know she's flamboyant she's very flamboyant in her life you're more um not reserved you more not more reserved you are more a bit more reserved than her anyway you have your oh we have your moments but she sees you as more quiet she sees you as more quiet but she does want you to have that your own time but she wants you to be a bit like her where you can go out, be that flamboyant person, and meet new people. Meet new people. Okay, she must be pairing you up to tell you to go out and meet a man, or a woman, I don't know. But I know that she wants you out, and being a bit more open to people and the world. You know, from your father, with that quiet placidness, I have to give you a lot of love. I really do. Mom didn't speak it that often, but she loved you. She loved you with all her heart. Right, would you have a sister, please? Or would you have a sister? There's two. Is it a brother? I know there's two. And she's showing, I've just turned your brother into a girl. Is that it? He's okay. Um, I like, he's not here anyway, so I can turn him into whatever I want. Um, and she's showing her love now to both of you. She's showing her love now to both of you. And together, they want to be around you. Know that they've both been sweethearts. And with all my heart, I want to give you their love. Thank you very much. God bless. Um, 
Now, I've got to let this man come in because he's the most impatient man I think I've ever had on a communication. Um, I need to speak to a mother and daughter. At, at back, is there anybody else? So there's two. I want to say, this is mother's husband I need to speak to, for starters, your father, do I need to speak to, because I know he's a husband and a father. I also know he can be very impatient, very um, <coughs> forcing in his opinion, he's in the way he is as a person. Would you understand that? I don't believe I'm over there, sweetheart. Would you understand that he's quite a strong-minded gentleman? Yeah. You do. And that when he, um, he owns the platform. Yes. <laughs> I'm the boss, I have to say, and he's making me feel as if I've got to do everything he says yes. and not what I want. Yeah. It's what he wants, yeah. you understand? Um, he's given me, um, okay. Well, you've had a heart attack, something to do with here, his chest. Because I feel like I'm being crushed. Would you understand that? No, okay, I'll come back to that, right? Because I actually felt like I can't, I know we can't breathe when we go take our transition, yes. Yes. but I cannot breathe. And I'm really suffering to get my breath because I have emphysema there. And he's making me struggle. So I'm having him to take it away. Yeah, okay. Um, now, as I work with him, he's very um, male orientated, may I say. Male orientated. In the sense that, um, like what he says goes. And. If I want my dinner at three o'clock, it will be on the table at three o'clock. Yeah. And if I want fish on a Friday, I will have fish. Yeah. It's quite simple. Um, I know this man must have made money for something. Had he at one time worked his way up and become quite high in his job? No. He was, he was a worker. I just feel I've made money and he liked money. He liked money. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm hearing him wrong then. I knew it was about money because I know that was a very important factor. I also know with him that um, he wasn't an easy father neither. No. He was, could be quite strict. Yeah. And he loved you, but he never said it. I couldn't say it. I don't feel like I've said it enough. <coughs> in the last few years. In the last few years? Before that. Before that, but not the last few years, you understand then, okay. Right. Um, I know he'd become quite poorly. I know that he became quite poorly. And I also know with him that, um, I don't believe you left his side, his wife, his, your mum. Because I felt disagreements. Yeah. There was disagreements in the family. Yeah. Um, and those disagreements carried on after his passing. Yeah. And to this day, they've never been solved. Right. You understand that? Yeah. He saw every bit of that disagreement. He's not taking it to heart. He's not taking it, you know, he's not taking it and it's worrying him. They don't do that in the spirit world. They don't worry about things. But he's trying to sort it out. He's trying his hardest to sort it out, to bring somebody back in the fold. Do you understand that? There's somebody at the family and he's trying his hardest 
to bring them back into the fold. Um, I also, <laughs> you know, it keeps going on about money. If we won't stop talking about money and I'm going, for God's sake, talk, give me some more evidence. Um, it must have left you quite well. You. You know, I'm talking to the lady, really. his wife, more than anything. He made sure that you were okay. That was his main important thing. He didn't do enough. I was talking to the lady about one-to-one -one interaction. He didn't do enough, like taking you out for meals or taking you dancing. He didn't do that. He wasn't that way gentleman. He wasn't that type of a gentleman. But he was a gentleman. I have to say, he's giving me respect. He's giving me respect. Unless he liked the ladies and he just fancies me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, she said yes. <laughs> <coughs> Do you know, this man come to me in my sleep last night. He was very eager to make sure he got a message to his wife. I'm not leaving you out, sweetheart, but to his wife. There's a sorry in there for some of the things. <laughs> he wouldn't say it when he was alive. He wouldn't have said it when he was alive, but there's a sorry in there. And you have to do more to look after yourself but you also have to tell people when there's a problem because you don't. You keep things to yourself. If you're not feeling well, you say, oh, I'm fine. Oh, I'm fine. And you're not. You need to be a bit more open. He sees you from the spirit world still and he sees when you're telling tales. And he knows that you need to allow the family to look after you a little bit more because they want to. Your daughter wants to look after you. She wants to be there for you. But sometimes you won't tell her if you're not feeling well. You've got to tell them or he'll come back and haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> He's quite a dominant character. He's such a dominant character. But I have to say, it's been a pleasure working with him. I found him very easy to work with because I'm very straight talking, he's very straight talking. He's actually said thank you to me because he needed to get this message to his wife. He needed you to know he's still watching you from the spirit world in a good way, in a good way. Okay? Know that he's been, sweetheart, and to yourself, my love. And he's been to surround you both with that healing balm. Thank you for working with me, ladies. God bless. I'm now going to hand you over to Tim, who will give his communication for you. Tim. Thank you very much. Once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, somewhat like Jeanette, I did try and be uh, factual in my... <laughs> Uh, delivery of uh, mediumship so if you do understand the information please work with me um, I have a gentleman with me here who I believe to be somebody's husband and um, uh, not an overly tall man but quite a, a solid man in, the, in, the, in his build here uh, uh, and I know I, I, I want to I want, feel like I want to go maybe into his 70s maybe creeping into the 80s so, so the late 70s when he passes uh, there um, and, and he keeps giving me uh, two names here and I do want to place one of them with him he keeps getting they're very traditional but nonetheless he keeps giving me the name of, of uh, 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 Tom and the name of Bill and I feel like I want to be over this side of, of the church does anybody understand this with husband please and I do feel that this gentleman, by the way, takes uh, a heart attack, bless him. He's quite sudden, quite quick. He's passing. Okay, if I can open it up to the whole old church here. Let me see if I can help you a little bit more. He keeps taking me to, uh, you know, the outdoor bowls. 
uh, he keeps taking me to where there are bowls being played. Uh, I'm not sure if he is part of that, uh, but, but I do feel like very near to where he lives, there's a bowling green. Somebody should understand that information. Okay, can I ask, does anybody understand? Oh, okay. Oh, possibly, okay, I can work with a possibly. Um, where are you gonna put your hand up? Yes. Okay, okay, I'll work with both of you here. Uh, I, feel, I feel this is husband. If it's not husband, it's somebody very, very close within the family. If I've got that relationship wrong, uh, forgive me. And, and I feel like I want to say, uh, 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 Bill William, you're comfortable with that? You're not. Thank you so much for working with me. Okay, my lady here with the lovely top on. Uh, um, and that would be his name? Yes. Okay, yes. wonderful. And can you understand why he keeps taking me to this bowling green? He lives near it. Okay, that's, as, long as, you're comfortable with, as long as you're comfortable with that. And, and would you understand where he is? Um, I feel like uh, this gentleman is comfortable socialising. Yes. Okay, I'm putting that in a very nice way. Um, uh, but I know I want to be a member of like a, a, a workman's club or something like that. You know, one of these family clubs where you'd go and it would have a bar, but yeah. it would also have uh, some, every now and then some live music on, on a stage That's there. Right. You understand that? And would I be right here in saying that, 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 that William was, was part of the committee of that club? Yes. There you go. Because he's full of himself, this man. He's full of his own importance, a bit like me. And <laughs> I, I used to run that club, you know. Other people thought they ran it, but, but it, was down, it was all down to me. That would, if it wasn't for me, that club would close down years ago. You understand his personality. Uh, that's the man I ha have with me here. Uh, um, he, 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 uh, and would you understand also where somebody within the family uh, owned or ran a shop? And can I ask, is this an electrical shop? There you go. Because he keeps taking me into an electrical shop. The kind of shops were, that would sell, you could get, a, 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 you don't know what this is yet. Uh, <laughs> could get a fist, <laughs> could get a kettle, an iron, one of those types of shops, yeah? They may every now and then expand to something like a fridge, but it's radios, that, that one of those types of shops there. Uh, this is what he makes me aware, uh, aware of. Uh, and, I, and, and also he's talking here. So is it his brother that used to be the bus driver? Somebody was a bus driver. Yeah, yeah you understand yeah. that? He's, he's talking here about somebody, somebody was a bus driver. Um, and, uh, uh, and whoever that bus, I think that bus driver must also be in the spirit world. Now, I haven't got the bus driver with me, but I know he's, he's a bit of a character. Uh, and and it, it, he would stop at a bus stop and get out and have a fag. And, 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 and all the old girls would be on the bus saying, come on, we want to go to town, we want to get to the shops before they... I'm having a cigarette, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, um, uh, and and this, is, this is chalk and cheese, this, because I know you're William. He's, he's a stickler for organisation. He's a stickler for time. He's very, he's, uh, he's not telling me he's ex-military, but he's got that bearing about him. Right. You understand? He's a very, very organized man. And I know uh, when he passes here, bless him, and can I ask, I just want to re-establish something. Am I right in saying he passes quite quickly? Because yes, I keep is. feeling like it's a heart attack or something of that ilk yes, uh, there. Um, but I must, I must be right in saying everything is organized. Yes. Everything's organized. Uh, I've got me uh, insurance with it, with, 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 and it's, 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 it's uh, it'll be a very traditional, like this is me guessing a little bit, like I've got me insurance with the, with the uh, co-op or with the Royal, or whatever they are, you know, a very traditional uh, insurance firm uh, and, and there's some money in the bank there uh, and, and the mortgage has been paid up and everything's organised for you, you understand? Uh, and, and, and would you understand where within in, in the house there was a, a bureau, yes. young, one of those roll top bureaus, because he's taken me to that, where, and it's almost like this is my space, this is my office, yes. because I'm important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and, and love, don't you be putting paperwork in there because your paperwork's not as, oh, as important as my yeah. my dad's bigger than your dad. He, that's, a, that's the type of fellow he is. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, oh, let me tell you about the battle I was in in the Second World War. It was a bigger battle than what you were in. You know, that's the, that's, you know, we lost more men than what you did. You know. uh, but, but I know he talks here about being organised, and that's why he takes me to this bureau here. Oh, you know, there is a... Oh, just give me that thing. You know, there is a pen set. Oh, you know, you used to get these box, a pen and a pencil that looked yeah. exactly the same. He was given that for something to do with services, like like 25 years in the same job, that type of yeah, thing, yeah. which you must still have. Yes, I uh, and I'm seeing it there very, very clearly. But what he's trying to highlight here is, is, is about being organized and something to do with paperwork here. Now, I know I want to t come to you here about something that's going on currently where you need to be on top of some paperwork. Would that make sense to yes. you? And I know he's, he, you know, if he was here now, he'd say, oh, come out of the way, my love, and let me do it for you, because I'm better at paperwork than you, because he's, be he's best in the world at everything, this man, uh, clearly, you know. Uh, he'd probably say, Tim, will you stand to one side and I'll do the mediumship as well? <laughs> uh, swap roles, you be the communicator, Tim, because you're not very good at this mediumship. Uh, um, um, but, but I know he's encouraging, there's a, there's a certain aspect of paperwork that's la symbolically landed in your lap lately, yes. that you, you, it's almost like you're, oh, I don't know if I want to deal with this, I don't want to, sure. but I want to, I want to encourage you to, to yeah. it's a, it, my dad, you know, when there was a job I didn't want to do, my dad used to just say, boy, get it done, yeah. just get it done and get it behind you, and it's almost like that's the type of thing he's saying here. Yeah. Get it done and get it behind you. There you go. Well, she's a good girl. Good girl. I know we've just lost our queen, but let me say this: then where your where, where this where William's concerned, there must be memories of um, Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Some connection. I don't know if he went. To, I'm guessing he went to a tea party or he was awarded something. But there was some connection to do with Buckingham Palace. There, you understand that. He's a man's man, yeah. without a doubt. And he's not one who come here, give me a cuddle. But I know he's expressing his love to you right now. Okay. He's expressing his love to you right now. I'm glad that you've let him know that the paperwork's done. Now we don't have to pester me anymore. Uh, uh, but I know I want to leave you, and obviously it's the whole of his family there, with his love. Thank you very much Thank for working with much. me. I've got time to just squeeze one more quick one in here. Um, can I ask, does somebody have a son in the spirit world? who died suddenly. My lovely lady at the back there. Uh, and I'm, I, I only feel like I'm talking about a young man in his 20s, maybe into his 30s. You comfortable? With, can, I, can I hear your voice? Yes. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, it's me. Hey, well, it's, it's you I'm, I'm, with, I'm directing it to, yeah. yeah. It's you I'm engaging with, lovely. Thank you. Will you work with me? Yeah. Lovely, there you go. Yeah. And, and I, then I, if, I, if it's your son that I have with me here, I must be right in saying this was very unexpected and I feel like I want to say this is an accident. You, you, you're comfortable with that statement? Uh, and, and I feel like I, I haven't got all the information yet. Uh, I'm encouraging him to draw closer. But I feel like uh, uh, this is a vehicle accident and I'm out I in a street when this happens. I'm not saying he's out of the vehicle, but, but, I, but I know I want to talk about... I don't know if that's a gentleman trying to come in or just hovering around saying what them weird people talking to dead people for. Uh, um, uh, uh, there was a gentleman with a rucksack appearing through the, through the gap in the door. Um, I feel like uh, uh, I want to talk about in the middle of the day here. You can say no to that. I, I can't say exactly. Oh, you, oh okay. Would you understand if I said this is, this is either in the summer or on a very hot day? Because yeah. I'm seeing a scene here, and I feel like it's a very warm day yeah. when I take my transition. Uh, and, and I have to say, this is not a case of... Please take a seat. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think this is a case of we rush your son off to hospital and a month later he passes. It feels like this all happens on the same day, sadly. And you should understand here where, with, with, with your son, uh, the name of Stephen that fits into his life there. Yes. 
Yeah, wonderful. I, I, I just no one wants to talk about Stephen because every time I go back to him, that that name is in the energy there. I, I'm not 100% comfortable. It's his name, but I know it's a name that's important to him. You're comfortable with that. He 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 comes here and oh. So would I be right in saying we've just passed his birthday? Uh, mm, <laughs> should be stretching it to say just, but I feel like he's saying we've just passed his birthday. So that would be what what eight weeks ago or something. We're stretching it a little bit to say just, but I I yeah you. Oh, there you go. Maybe a little bit less yeah. than, than eight weeks then. So we are happy we just passed his birthday. Um, because I, I get the impression, I, I feel like I want to be saying that, that he had an imp this year, he had an impact on somebody from the spirit world. Somebody became aware of him on his birthday. Yeah. You, you, you're good with that. Wonderful. And I just want to say to whoever that was, the experience was real. It was me. It was me letting you know uh, I was near, letting you know I, I, I'm around here. Um, um, uh, not sure what he's showing me here. Now, am I right in saying your 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 son worked for either local council or government? You can say no. Well, not that loud, though. <laughs> I'm, joking, I'm, joking, I'm, joking. I'm teasing you, I'm teasing you. And then would you understand, then, if, it, if it's not something to do with his job, would you understand where you have, you have reason to be going to a local town hall or, or official building? <laughs> now, that's, that's not always a bad thing. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we went to court and thought, oh, my God, this is terrible, this is the end of the world. We were going to adopt our daughter. What a beautiful thing. And I was going, oh, my God, it's a guilty complex, you know. Uh, it was a beautiful, and, and the judge got us up with him, and we were taking photographs. It was a beautiful day. Uh, and unless you're naughty, it's, it, it might be a positive thing. <laughs> the, 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 and, and then, I don't want to try and make it fit, but if it's not yourself, would you understand why someone within your family has reason to go to an official building like the local town hall? Yeah. Yeah, 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 let them get in trouble, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're comfortable with that statement? Very much. Okay. And then whoever that may be, you must understand why your family members, I know it's your son who's the spokesperson, why, why your family member, members would be very proud of that individual at the moment. Yeah. There is reason to be proud of that individual, what they've achieved. You, you, you're good with that. Uh, uh, and... And I know, um, I need to get this for you. So you must have a purse with the photograph of your son in it. Yeah. And you must have it on you right now. No, well, that's very naughty of you. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, you <laughs> but, uh, but you understand why he talks about his photograph yeah, yeah. in your purse. And I feel like I'm lifting, lifting a flap, a lid, yeah. and I can see my... my you know one of these transparent pockets and you can see the photograph of your son there. I just need to leave you with this message. Mother, I am closer to you than that photograph can ever, ever be. Because you're in my heart and I'm in your heart. Uh, um, um, your, your son, forgive me to br for bringing sad memories, but your son must have been cremated. Then, then, why, then, then, then I need to offer this, and I don't understand then why. I would understand it if he was cremated, but I need to, I need to say this to you. Uh, I am in the wind, I am in the sun, I am, I am in the air that you breathe. I am closer to you than that photograph can ever be. Please take your son's love. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Very quickly, a few notices. This Wednesday at 3 o'clock, we have a divine style service, so similar to today's format, and that's with Ivor Holland coming up from Little Hampton. Uh, Thursday evening, we have a beginners, and <coughs> beginners is the crucial word, development circle, and that's going to be run by Tony Goswell.
there are three spaces left on that. It will be running for six weeks to a program, so we know what we're covering each week. And the payment will be taken in advance for all six sessions. If you'd like to have more info on that, please give me a shout after the service or drop me a message online. Next Sunday at 11 a.m., we have a Divine Style service again, and we have Anne-Marie Hogan with us, who is coming down from London. Friday the 23rd of this month, we have an evening of What's My Wine, which is one of our community times. So it's a series of wine tastings, and there's a bit of a twist there, because you'll have three people telling you what wine you've just drunk. So you need to work out who's telling the truth, and who's telling the porky pies. Oh, we're coming for that, don't we? It is. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Sounds good. You know, we have many events here at this church, apart from our services, circles, our development, our education, but our engagement as well. So this is one of those times we can come together, and what better than over seven glasses of wine. So that's on Friday the 23rd. Tickets are on sale now, and they are at a cost of £15 a head. This Thursday, we're trying out a new a Holistic Health Day. Every month, we have Brian Walker, psychic surgeon, psychic healer, coming to us from Portsmouth. Uh, as we're drawing into the winter months, we've still got to have the church open, all the lights on, the heating on. Brian is only working in one part of the church. So we're bringing in, there's a lady called Deb, uh, who sits in one of our circles. She has a bioresonance machine, which is a recognized device, uh, and that will measure your minerals, your vitamins, and a whole host of things. It is not a curative machine. It is simply to give you a little printout of where your state of health is at the moment. We've also got the lovely Elle. Uh, she was in our circles pre uh, the COVID era, and she is a fully qualified reflexologist. So we're just going to try a day and bring in uh, these holistic health. Obviously, you know what I'm like, I will investigate everybody before inviting them into the church. So I, like, I am comfortable, they are qualified, uh, and they are insured, and they are doing the practice for the best reason, not the financial reason. So, yeah. That's this Thursday. There'll be one uh, every month up until Christmas to see how they take off. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I need to change the ending slightly. No, I don't. I need to invite you up for the closing prayer, closing don't prayer I? Prayer. Yes. Yes, please. Do the closing prayer first. Sorry, it's just a little twist at the end of today. Before we close in prayer, <coughs> firstly, can Tim and I thank you? I mean, we've come all the way from Stafford. But you good folk have made us feel like we're home. So thank you very much for that. So let us all together as friends, all together as one unity, close this service in the power of prayer. Divine Spirit, and all our loved ones in the spirit world, can we offer up our thanks for once again proving that there is no death, that our loved ones are but a whisper away. And may we ask that the energy that has been built within this beautiful building today be offered up to you, to be given to healing to wherever in this world it is needed, especially to the soldiers, especially to the children of our world, and especially to the elderly, those who are lonely, those who are need folk. We give you thanks, Father, for that. And as we now travel to our homes, let each and every one of us take a piece of this beautiful energy built in here home with us. So each part of the day, we can feel that love that we have felt within this service. We ask you these things, Father, in your name, which is truth, love, and light. Amen. 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 Tim, Jeanette, thank you. I am so enjoying this time. So Thank nice you. to meet you in person, you. and I'm just loving the work that you bring into our church. I told you it's not true what they say about it. I know. Oh, well, I, did, I did listen to all the rumours, and there were many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're more than welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a new king, which to many of us is going to be very odd. 
many people similar to myself, we've always had a queen. From birth, we always had the queen. Not this one. Well, I said many of us. Oh. <laughs> Five. Well done. But it is, it's a new time, it's a new era, it's a new generation. And along with that, we have a new national anthem. So we'd invite you, if you're comfortable, please stand. If you do not wish to stand, absolutely fine. We do not judge in this place, all right? And join in with our new national <coughs> anthem. <coughs> a memento to take with you as to the rest of it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queen is dead. Long live the King. Long live the King. Thank you.